Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys here. I'm Christian Ocampo and today I'm being joined by Dave Mitchell. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, thank you. Te technically it's Dave B. Mitchell. That's my official professional name. That's how you'll find me on IMDb and, and all the social media and stuff. So. Dave B. Mitchell, it is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for clearing that up with us. All right, well, we, I'm glad to be here. Thanks. we're excited to have you and we're itching to ask you some questions. Let's uh, do it. First of all, what is it like working in the industry today? Um, well, I mean, it's great. Uh, you know, I think I have the best job in the world. Um, it's it's definitely more competitive. Uh, there's a lot of people that want to do it. Um, you know, there's a lot of celebrities doing it now. Uh, it's certainly part of it is there are more people trying to do it, but there's also so much more work now because, you know, just the explosion of there's so much more animation going on right now with all the different channels and different outlets and platforms. Um, you know, games are huge. So there's games being done at every tier from the AAA stuff on down to indies. Um, and there's all kinds of, just all kinds of need for voice work, you know, for not just the traditional outlets like animation and games, TV, film, but there's so much internet stuff, e-learning, audiobooks, which is really the only thing I don't do really is audiobooks. Um, it's because I just really don't have time. Um, but I do a little bit of everything else. And, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work. Um, but mainly it's just, it's the coolest part of the industry, I think, because the community of voice actors and, you know, the producers and writers and directors and engineers and fans is just so supportive and so cool that, you know, every day is just, it's a blessing to be part of this and, and to get to do what I do for a living. Right. So during your experience in this industry, what is your favorite project you have worked on? Um, hmm. Well, I have a, kind of a favorite character that is kind of an ongoing thing. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a webcomic called Looking for Drew. But it started off as sort of a parody of World of Warcraft, which I'm in a bunch of World of Warcraft games. Uh, but I actually started working on this before I ever started working on WoW, which is funny. But um, there's a, a character. He's one of the main characters. Uh, his name is Richard. He's an undead warlock. And he goes around gleefully murdering the inhabitants of every village he finds while singing parodies of Disney songs. So, <laughs> so yeah. So I get to be British. I get to be evil. I get to sing. It's, it's amazing. Um, if I had to pick... I mean, there's so many things that I've worked on that I love, and I'm a huge geek, so, you know, I'm a fan of all this stuff. I'm a comic fan, I'm a sci-fi fan, um, so it's definitely in my wheelhouse, uh, working on all these things, but probably my greatest professional and personal bucket list item was, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, I'm an obsessively huge Star Trek fan, I have been since I was three years old, and I got to work on Star Trek Bridge Crew, and... That was kind of that double check off bucket list thing because I got to be a Klingon captain. So I was a Klingon in Star Trek Bridge Crew, and I'd always said, I just want to work on, I don't care if it's one line as a red shirt, I'll be, I'll be a treble. I don't care. I just want to work on something, you know, actual licensed part of the Star Trek universe. And so I, I got to work on that. I was a Klingon captain, and the guys that actually produced that game, I've worked with them a bunch of times on things before. So they know me and they, they know what I like. And, and so another one of the characters I play in that is just this ancillary bridge officer that when you're, I don't know if you know the game, but it's a VR game set on the bridge of a starship. And you can wander around and, and take up any of four different positions and actually control it in VR. And it's really, really cool. Um, so I'm one of the just atmospheric guys that's kind of off to the side working on a, a busted panel. And he's got the panel open. And so I'm, I'm at the session, and I'm just going through the lines, we're recording everything, and <laughs> I get to the line, it's got the panel open where I say, oh, what a mess, it looks like a corn got loose in here. And then I bust it out laughing after I made sure they got the line, because they know, they knew that I'm completely obsessed with the Gorn, like you saw here, my hand was, you know, is, is the one Gorn. Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed with the Gorn, and I, I delivered that line, and they laughed, and they said, we wrote that line specifically for you. <laughs> I was like, you guys are the best. So, yeah, so I actually got to make reference to the Gorn, and I said, if ever have the Gorn in this game, I will pay you to let me come be the Gorn. So that would be, if I had one, like, pinnacle thing to do, if I played the Gorn, then it's like, all right, I'm done. I, if the world's done with me, I'm okay with that. 
So that's probably that's probably my thing. So I got to be an actual part of Star Trek. That was probably my favorite thing. <laughs> ah, that's funny. All right, uh, a show you worked on almost ten years ago. What was that working on Little Bush? Little Bush, yeah, that was uh, that was one of the first kind of one of the first bigger things that I ever did. It actually started off um, as original content for Amped Mobile, which I don't know if you remember that or not. They were a, a cell phone provider that was one of the first companies that was creating original content for their subscribers. Hmm. And so they were kind of ahead of the curve on all that stuff. And they had actually done Little Bush as a, an animated series specifically for Amped Mobile. It was the only way you could watch it. And then when they sold it to Comedy Central, Comedy Central picked it up, and they ended up keeping the cast, which... Um, one of the best things about working on that was that the guy who played Lil George and a bunch of other characters was one of my closest friends, Chris Parson, who you've seen in a million things. Now he's in Overwatch, and he, I mean he's he's all over the place, and he's amazing. And he he loves to tell the story of how we ended up getting that job. Uh, <laughs> union. I was new in town. I had a, t a bunch of experience from working in smaller markets. So I had a resume. I had a studio. I had experience. But I would look on there because I just wanted to work. So I found this job one day that said animated content for animated. I talk for a living, right? Animated content for a cell provider. And they said, do you do uh, political impressions? And, and for me, I think impressions are the thing I'm least good at. If I was to list my strengths, that would be at the very bottom. Um, and I do some of them, and, and the ones I do are pretty good, but there are other guys that are just wizards with that, and Chris is one of them. So, and he, at the time, he was doing a killer W and a few other things. So I sent him the thing and said, hey, this thing's paid $500, and, and it's their, this is you. They're looking for you. So he goes down to Ant and calls me from there and said, hey, are you going to come down and audition for this thing? And I was like, eh, yeah, I really hadn't thought about it, impressions, whatever. He said, no, you need to come down here. They're actually having employees read for the other characters. Like he said, there were a couple of guys out on a smoke break, like, hey, you're going to read for that, that Bush thing? He's like, sure, why not? So he said, I want you to come down here. If I get this, I want you here with me. I want you to work on this with me. So I was, so I, and he loves this part, because I was like, I don't know. It's, it records on Saturday, and it's been a long week, and I have to drive all the way to the west side. Blah, blah, blah. And so he said, get your ass down here. So I did. And then we went to dinner together, and we were both sitting. We're sitting there in a food court at, uh, at a mall. His phone rings. It's them saying, "You booked this." He comes back, says, "I booked it." My phone rings. It's them saying, "You booked this." So we both ended up working on it. And then, uh, yeah, when Comedy Central picked the show up, they they kept us, which was amazing because we were nobody, and you know, we were just we we're like, wait a minute, we have a series on Comedy Central, really? So that was. Uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Getting to work with Chris was uh, was a blast, and you know it was it was a good cast, and especially like season two. They brought Kari Walgren in, and Kari is we were all friends with Kari already because we all had the same agent at the time, and um, I'm sure you guys know who Kari is. So uh, she's one of the very best in the business, and not only is she one of my very very favorite voice actors ever, she's one of my favorite people too. So she just she's amazing. She's talented. She's great. And uh, uh, so, yeah, when they brought her in for season two, we were all just super jazzed that she was there. So That's an awesome story. Not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, Chris loves that one. So <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> yeah, because it's me being all whiny, so we get to think about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, good stuff. All right, uh, another question. What was I working on Star Wars The Old Republic? Ooh, that... <laughs> That's, to this day, is one of my favorite video games I ever did. Um, because when I went in, I was playing a Nautilon male, an Ortolan male, and then one other character. But for the Nautilon, I got to speak Hatties for two hours. And uh, it was funny because it's actually where I met another one of my friends who's another uh, voice actor you probably know of, Orion Akaba. Um, Orion was sort of assistant directing that day and I walked in and I, I kind of have this thing where I, I'm, it's sort of my thing that I'm known for that 
I'm already a fan of a lot of the stuff I work on, and if I'm not, I'll get something. I almost always wear a shirt to the session that has something to do with what I'm working on that day. So I walked in wearing an X-Wing shirt. And <laughs> I walked in, and he turned to, to the director, Paul, and he said, um, I think this is going to go well. So I get in the booth, and they had, uh, they had reference recordings of the lines being read. And so they'd play it, and then I would deliver it back. And after about three or four, I see a Ryan lean over to Paul and whisper something. Paul gets on the talk back and says, um, we're not going to play in the reference anymore. We're just slowing you down. So we just plowed through it because I was, I'm a geek and I love that stuff. So, you know, the Hatties stuff, I was like, okay, I, I know how this works. So I got to speak Hatties for two hours and it was just amazing, you know. And again, I think that was the first thing I worked on where I got to be an actual part of the Star Wars universe, because I'm, I'm also a huge Star Wars fan. So, um, you know, just getting to be part of that for real was amazing. I've done, I've done several other Star Wars projects since then, but I, that was the first one. And I mean, you can imagine, you walk in and, oh yeah, you're working on Star Wars. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, definitely. <laughs> that was pretty cool. All right. Uh, since you really mentioned World of Warcraft, what was the working on that franchise? Uh, that was, I mean, it's, you know, it's a, one of the biggest games in the world and, you know, millions and millions of players all over the world. I've got tons of friends that are hardcore WoW players and, and you know, having already done the looking for group thing was kind of fun to actually get to them. In fact, I think the first session I did for WoW, uh, I was wearing a, a Richard LFG shirt when I went to the session. Um but I've gotten to play some, some really cool characters in that, um, that it's funny still, like, you know, I've, I've been in so many things, um, but I never felt like I had a lot of, like, big marquee characters that I would be known for, but apparently people know a lot of this stuff more than I thought they did. Um, so, in WoW, I, so if you know Hansgar and Franzok, um, I was Hansgar, um, I, uh, ended up, I was, I'm Kane Sunfury, who was Illidan's right hand man? Um, I was um, Spearwalker Ebonhorn, who I think people probably know what his deal is by now. I don't want to say anything in case people haven't played it. But um, and then yeah, several I think uh, Sigurd the Giant Slayer. Um, there's a few others in there I know, but uh, yeah, just getting to be part of again that's such a a huge, fully realized world, and so many great actors. And Andre Toys, who's the voice director for Blizzard, is amazing and such a great director and so great person. Lover and every I get to my several other friends. Liam O'Brien's directed me on that. I think Jamie Blanc maybe did a couple of times. So every time I go in there, it's somebody I adore, and I get to work on really, really cool stuff that I know fans are just gonna love when they get their hands on it so it's it's great it's great being part of it oh definitely it's 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 a huge series so it's it's a big deal usually, by the way i'm usually wearing a horde shirt when i go to those sessions just for the record so <laughs> so sorry alliance i gotta wear the horde shirt when i go you know i gotta stick with my guys that i'm in the game so you know <laughs> all right uh another big uh series you worked on was like working on found fantasy 15 that was very cool. Uh, um, and I'm, in fact, I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure that's one of the games that when I was working on it, I don't think I knew what it was. Um, because there are so many things that we end up working on that are under code names, and they don't always tell us what it is because they're so protective of, of how story, I, you know, story and character information gets released to the public. And and they're real specific about how they want to present things, which I totally understand, um, because they have a way that they want to reveal these things. And so I don't remember, because you know, it was a couple of years ago now, but I, I don't remember if I knew at least right off that that's what it was. Um, I knew that it was something big. And I might have had an idea, because I, I was in Lightning Returns, and I'm trying to think if I did one other. I think Lightning Returns was probably the first one I did, which was 13, I think. Um, but that was also directed by another friend, Keith Farley, who's an amazing voice director and also just a phenomenal voice actor himself. He's been in, you know, a million things and is great. And so just, again, working with really cool people and, you know, no idea 
where that was going to go. And one of the really cool things is lately uh, on another project that I can't talk about, uh, I've actually gotten to do something kind of unusual, which is most of the time in games you're by yourself. Uh, I've been working on a project lately where uh, where they paired me and Ray Chase, who is not this. Mm. So, so Ray and I had met before, um, but we've actually gotten to work together quite a bit lately, and he's another guy I can't say enough nice things about. He's, he's talented, and he's a super, super nice guy, and, and it's just kind of fun that, you know, we got Dino and Noctis working together, and here, here's a funny thing um, about Dino. Um, my first realization about Dino was I saw some stuff on Twitter just trashing me. <laughs> I kind of went, what? Because I, I didn't even know. And they were saying, Ooh, you know, what's the idea with this? Why does this guy sound like this? What was he thinking? And I had never even seen a picture of Dino until the game came. Because, you know, with the casting, the company, especially the Japanese companies, have really, really specific ideas about what they want, especially when you're dubbing a game. They, they have very specific ideas of what they're looking for. And it's just our job to fulfill what they want. So I did exactly what they wanted Dino to be. When I saw Dino, it was interesting because my first reaction, if I'd seen a picture of him before I did the character, I don't think in my head that I would have gone with the characterization that we ended up doing for him, um, just based on what he looked like. But it's what they wanted, and so I saw one, one tweet that said, I would really like to know what direction this man was given. And all I could think was, you're hearing it. I'm doing exactly what they directed me to do. And, but the funny thing is, as a result of that, I ended up finding that there are actually a bunch of Dino fans out there that really love the character, and they've been awesome on social media and super supportive. And in fact, there's a, there's a fan con in England that a group of the Dino fans that, that, that I communicate with on, on Twitter uh, had gone to, and they were doing a trivia contest, a, fi a Final Fantasy trivia contest, and they showed me their team name was Dave B. Mitchell. And I got the hugest kick out of that because having like having something named after a character you played is one thing. It's the first time I think I've had anything named after me personally. So so I got a huge kick out of that. And uh, and they're still, you know, they're still all over uh, Twitter and Instagram and they're awesome and I appreciate them and and uh, you know, it's part of the thing with this business too, is that no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try to give a good performance, do good work. You know, it can make everybody happy. Everybody get, has ideas of what things are supposed to sound like. Um, it's especially tricky when you take over a character that someone else has played or a character that has been around for a long time that's never had a voice. Um, you know, a character from comics or something like that. It's really tough to take over, especially when people like a previous version of the character. Um, but ultimately, all you can do is, is what they hire you to do and, and try to fulfill their needs as best you can and, and hope that the fans will embrace it, so. Right. All right, uh, now here's the big one. What uh -oh. we waiting for? What was that picking on The Amazing Spider-Man on PS4? <laughs> uh, I, I can tell you that if it's not the best thing I've ever been part of, it's easily one of the best things I've ever been part of. Um, everything about this game is just mind-blowingly good. Uh, you know, all, the cast is insane. Uh, the writing's amazing. The the animation and uh, all the video stuff is great. The sound design is great. The score is great, and it is so 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 uh, evident that it was a labor of love for everyone at Insomniac and everybody that worked on it. Because as a huge comic book fan myself. Man, they just got everything right. They got everything right. Um, when I went in for my first session, I knew that I... It was under a code name, but I knew what it was because it had been announced. So um, when I went in, I don't think I knew who I was till I got there. And Chris Zimmerman, who directed it, who's another one of the best directors in the business and, and my friend, and I love her, and she's just... You know, anybody that works for her will tell you she's just a wizard. She's great. And... Um, she went in and said, so, you're playing Shocker. And I went, I am? <laughs> okay. So, because Shocker is one of the coolest Spidey villains, you know. Um, he, he's one of the villains that has given Spider-Man 
uh, one of the toughest times over the years. Um, and I love the redesign they did with him. He's still got the padded Pete look, but the helmet, the new shock gauntlets, the way that the shock waves look, it, I mean, it, you can see how powerful Shocker really is. Um, and again, bringing, being able to bring that character to life and the writing was just so good because, you know, if you played the game, you, you see that Herman doesn't want to do what he's doing. He doesn't want to be there, but he has to. And he's even trying to convince Spider-Man, look, you know, I don't want to fight you. I don't want to do this, but I have to. So if you just get out of my way, I'll go and, you know, we won't have a problem. And ultimately, you know, he doesn't. So then, you know, Herman gets to tell him, you know, have it your way. You want to fight? Let's fight. And so, yeah, so that's where that kind of goes. But, um, you know, I, everybody's perfect. In it. Uh, they did something that I, I think I talked about on, uh, on Twitter and Instagram because everybody was there kind of posting about this. It's something really unique that none of us had ever done before. And you put the whole cast together, and we've done, you know, hundreds if not thousands of games. Um, they took the majority of the cutscenes from the game. They didn't put, like, the boss battle stuff, so my stuff wasn't in there. Uh, Vulture, um, Electro, um, Scorpion, all that stuff. Not but they really kind of took everything that was, obviously, Spider-Man, Mary Jane, Yuri, um, Mr. Negative, uh, Doc Ock, and Aunt May. And they cut together an almost two-hour movie of just the cutscenes, and they invited us over to a theater, and they actually showed it to us. So a lot of our first exposure to really some of the stuff in the game was seeing it that way. And I was sitting next to Dave Fenoy the whole time, and we're watching this thing, and every five minutes, of it's one, five minutes, one of us will elbow the other and say, this is just so good. How can this be this good? And all of us, all the cast, crew, everybody walked out of there just kind of amazed because we realized that we had been part of something that really is next level. You know, it's next level as far as video games go. Um, and some of the performances, you know, Yuri, I, the funny thing is I've got a lot of friends who have played Spider-Man in various iterations, and I thought every one of them was great. Um, every time I've seen one of them as Spider-Man, I'm like, well, yeah, of course, that's perfect. Having said that, and with all due respect to all of them, because they're all brilliant, if you put me in the middle of a field somewhere and said, hey, Dave, um, we need a Spider-Man, what do you got? I think the first name out of my mouth would have been Yuri Longhall. Um, who, another guy who's one of my favorite voice actors and favorite human beings, and there's not a person on Earth who doesn't love Yuri Lowenthal. And if you find someone who does, you should avoid them because they're bad people. Um, his, his take on Spider-Man was just, I can't imagine it being better. Um, and Bill Sallers, who plays Doc Ock, I've played Doc Ock before, um, and I was thrilled to get to do that. It was, I think it was in Shattered Dimensions. Um, so I have actually played the character. Bill is, hands down, my favorite Dr. Octopus. To me, when I saw the work he did in that, I, I told him, like, Bill, this is, this is the best version of this character I've ever seen. Um, I mean, the game, it's, it's a masterpiece. It really is. And, and, and the support and response we've gotten from the fans and the players is just absolutely overwhelming. And, and we're just all so, so happy we got to be part of something that people have really embraced and really loved and, and feel like everybody that worked on it really honored and did justice to the legacy that is one of the greatest comic book characters in the history of media. It's a great game. I'm very excited. There's going to be more coming out down in the future. Yeah. I yeah. Hope, I hope yeah. I think all of us are like, Hey, you know, anytime you guys want to do more of this stuff, just give us a call. We'll, we'll come be in it. It's got to be more that has to. I, well, I, I mean, one, I don't see how it couldn't be at this point. It's not like the game didn't do well. So, yeah, I, mean, I know, you know, I know there's DLC coming out. Um, I don't know anything else. I don't know about me being involved in anything in the future, but I just know that, uh, that you know, I'm here, guys. <laughs> if, if you call, I'll show up. Uh, and I just have to say a special thank you to, to you and all the other fans. Uh, you know, my Twitter followers doubled since Spider-Man came out. And so much of that has been people who've taken the time to, to find me on there and to actually leave a comment or send me pictures or or just anything telling me how much they love the character. And I, I can't tell you, one, how overwhelming that's been, but just how much it really means to me 
the all the support from everybody and the fact that you love the character. I love the character. I love playing the character, and it was important to me because I'm a, a fan of the franchise. And um, I just can't thank you guys enough for for all the support. It's it's really been insane, and uh, every day still, every time I get something new, I'm just like, wow, I can't believe that people are you know people have been so kind and, and so effusive with their praise that I just uh, you know I'm kind of floored by it, and I really appreciate every single one of you. So I just want you all to know that. Awesome. All right. Uh, now we have a, a funny question we'd like to ask you. If you could be any character you have played in real life, who would you be? And you can mix and match. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a new one. Um, let's see. So you can mix them together and be that in real life? Is that the question? Yep. Or powers, abilities, whatever you want. Jeez. Oh, um, oh man, that's a good one. Uh, what do you think here? <laughs> wow, I, I'm not even sure where to go with that. I mean, you know, just my, my obsession with Star Wars uh, or with Star Trek, and Star Wars, but Star Trek, uh, you know, maybe the Klingon captain, just because you know you're a Klingon captain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's that not cool? Yeah. Um, Wow, I don't know. There, there's so many of them in, you know, so many different. Uh... Okay, hmm, maybe Clayface. Maybe Clayface. I was Clayface in in the Batman Unlimited um, films, and it's pretty cool to be able to turn into anything you want at any time. That could be useful. Yeah, that could be kind of useful. I would try not to be as evil, and you know, I wouldn't <laughs> want to go around hurting people. But it'd be kind of cool to just turn into whatever you want anytime you want. Maybe with some of the force with, with, with you. <laughs> oh, now see, yeah. If you, if you could turn into anything you want and have force powers, that would be pretty cool. And maybe, would, maybe some chakra powers too. Well, the, I mean, who doesn't want shock on this? Yeah. Who doesn't want shock on this? I do. I mean, again, I would use them for good. <laughs> I'm not sure what that would be, but but I would find some way to use them responsibly. Because, you know, with great power... Well, anyway, you know. <laughs> Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a geek. I told you. I love this stuff. So are we. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm here. All right. Uh, is there anything else coming out that you can talk about or anything else you want to plug in at this time? Um, the, I've actually I've got a bunch of stuff actually in the pipeline. Um, it's funny because it, it seems like they were like, oh my god, you're in all this this cool stuff recently, and yes, but a lot of it is, you know, this stuff we've been working on for, in some cases, a couple of years, um, you know, there, there's a lot of lead time usually because there's so much extra work from so many other creative and talented people that go into, you know, bringing these things to fruition, um, and it just, it's funny how I just happen to have a bunch of, you know, bigger uh, titles and projects kind of all lined up and coming out all at once, so... Uh, which is great, you know. It's great for me, and, and again, it's just the, the the fan response I've gotten from everything has been really cool. Um, I can tell you that I've got there's a few big games that will be coming out that I will be able to talk about. Um, there's a couple I am dying to talk about, uh, but I can't. Um, but I, I promise, um, you know, for everybody that's following me, uh, it's at Dave B Mitchell on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I try to be super interactive and responsive, you know, because I figure if somebody is kind enough to take time out of their day to come tell me they like something I did, the least I can do is say thank you and, you know, and just let people know that it means something to me and that, that you know, without all of you, the fact that any of us wants to, you know, talk in silly voices for a living doesn't mean a thing. So, um, but I will definitely keep people updated. I've been having a blast since Spider-Man came out, actually just being able to interact with fans and, and, you know, even with the rest of the cast, I think, I think you must've seen it where Bill and I ended up starting kind of this pun thing and everybody else jumped in and we just started kind of just running with it and having, having fun. And, uh, you know, it was fun for us just to play with each other. It was fun for the fans to get involved and for people to see the cast having a good time outside of the game, which is really cool. Um, but I'll definitely keep everybody updated. Uh, thank you all for, for following me and supporting me and, you know, again, giving a crap that I want to do this for a living. It's still kind of overwhelms me a little bit. Um, but I really, really appreciate you all. 
And I am the luckiest guy in the world to get to do what I do and to have all of you, you know, sharing the love. It's, it's amazing. And I will definitely keep you updated because, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you're, you're all on this ride with me. So. All right. Well, since we mentioned the social media and the uh, question, aside from Twitter, any uh, Facebook or Instagram like, to go with it, or we just uh, it's the same actually. Yeah, Twitter and Instagram are both uh, at Dave B Mitchell. Um, I do have a Facebook fan page, but I, you know, I had Twitter linked to that for a while. I, I kind of fell off on that just because you just don't get the same level of interaction and involvement with that because of the way that they, you know, that the algorithm decides who gets to see what. Uh, and so that's why I really migrated over to Twitter. Uh, and Instagram more just because there I know that when I put something out, I know people are seeing it. I know that I'm getting reactions and getting to then interact with people. So pretty much those two platforms are my go-tos these days. All right. Well, thank you, sir, for joining us for this interview. We do have guys appreciate your time uh, making this happen. I appreciate you guys for having me. Thank you so much. And, uh, and you know, best of luck with the rest of it. I've seen some of the other shows and they're great. So we really appreciate you guys for, for again, for you know, giving us a voice. Ha! <laughs> you see what I did? Uh, and and uh, letting us, you know, chat a little bit. So, th so thank you guys, too. Yep, definitely. And we want to thank our fans for tuning in for this episode of the Ohio Guys. Thank you all. We will see you next time. Bye now.